The next demo that we're going to talk about is IP access, which is um, an option to provide you more connectivity to your downstream devices, um, essentially putting your network engineers or your uh, IT professionals right on the Open Gear appliance. So my name is Ramtin Rampur, and let's jump into the demo. If you haven't seen this slide before, uh, this is kind of how we build um, our solution um, all in one. Uh, today's focus is going to be around the centralized manager, which is uh, Lighthouse. This is your access portal into your downstream devices. And we're going to actually use an uh, OM1200 to get connectivity to a downstream device. Um, what the centralized manager uh, does is it actually does use the Docker containers to deploy some softwares and tools to enable that extra connectivity on the operations manager. The solution we're going to talk about today is IP access. Um, essentially, uh, the story here is that you're an engineer on call, whether network engineer, IT professional, and you just received a call that there's an outage, right? So somebody on the other side from Thousand Eyes said, hey, your NUC is dead. We need to be able to troubleshoot this thing. So in this example, uh, the operations manager is uh, able to reach the, uh, the Intel NUC that's on site, but the Intel NUC is not able to reach the internet. So what we're doing essentially is we're grabbing you and physically connecting you to the operations manager appliance, which means that whatever you want to access, you can. It doesn't have to be. We're beyond the point of connecting just to serial ports. Now you can RDP to things, you can bring up a browser, you know, a, a lot of firewalls these days are, are not so CLI friendly, but they have a beautiful browser that you can jump into and do your configuration. So we enable you to be able to do that. So we're back in the login screen of our centralized manager. Now, in order to save time and, you know, leave some room for questions, uh, what I've already done is I have enrolled this particular operations manager into um, our centralized gateway. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and um, take a look at the node enrollment section. And I've already deployed the IP access feature onto this device. This can happen automatically as nodes are coming in, or it can happen um, on a manual basis. So I've already finished this part. I know all the telemetry. I know exactly where this node is deployed, all of its IP addresses, its serial number. So the next step is to go ahead and jump into the IP access feature and um, client certificates. So once you actually enable this feature, you can build yourself certificates, which are uh, open VPN client files uh, that you're going to use to connect back to the centralized manager using this particular file. So I've already built one for edge field day cert. Um, and all you have to do is export it. So you would click the export button. You would get the file, and then you would use the file to initiate the connection. Um, I've, I've already exported this as well, just to, again, save some, save some time. Uh, I'm just using an open VPN tool called Viscosity. You can use any other ones that you would like. Um, and at this point, I'm simply just going to go ahead and say connect. Um, what this is prompting me for is I'm making a connection to our centralized access portal. So all I have to do is go ahead and put in my credentials followed by the host name of the downstream device that I want to connect to. In this case, I want to connect to a uh, operations manager with the host name OM1208-E-L, which is the default host name. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my password. So what this will do is it's essentially uh, trying to create a tunnel between uh, the client's laptop, um, client's uh, computer, location, all the way to the uh, Lighthouse. And then that gets tunneled from Lighthouse to the Open Gear appliance. And when that happens, as I mentioned, you become the engineer that's sitting right next to the Open Gear appliance. Even though I don't have a way currently to access that operations manager or that NUC, I know that the operations manager can access the NUC. So if I could access the operations manager, I will be able to access the NUC as well. Um, there are some advanced functionalities in IP access, like which routes you want to advertise, how do you want to lock it down. There's been a lot of talk about security. Do you want particular groups to access particular nodes? Um, but in this case, we just have it open. We can monitor this under the client status. We can see that uh, me, uh, Ramtin, is connecting to this node. 
um, with this particular common name and here's my remote IP address. So this is the IP address that we're connecting from, from this physical location. So let's go ahead and take a look. So looks like we're connected. That means that I'm technically having, uh, my, my PC, uh, my workstation, has the same routes as the operations manager's internal setup. Bring up a remote desktop tool because I know that the particular nook that we're trying to get to um, has a uh, has RDP enabled, and I'm going to punch in the internal IP address of the nook. So again, um, this was a great example of how the Open Gear essentially is the middleman that you may never even see, but it's enabling you, uh, the user, to be able to connect to your downstream devices. So it added it. Go ahead and put in my credentials. And I thought this background was very fitting for Edge Field Day. So, <laughs> um, so at this point, I'm inside the Nook, and I can start troubleshooting to see what was happening. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know if it was a new IT guy or something, but somebody happened to disable. The, the, the primary network interface, hence why it wasn't able to connect to the 1000i server. So uh, for this remediation, all I have to do is just simply enable, and um, this is going to allow me to access the internet and being able to talk to 1000i's again. Now if we open the browser, we can just go ahead and go to Google, and now everything is resolving. Uh, a question from that, is there, Something pre-configured on that workstation allowing you to route traffic from one network to the other? On my, own, on my workstation? Yeah, on this workstation um, that's on the Nook, right? Because now you've got multiple network interfaces. Um, no, there's nothing. So, so the Nook basically just has two network interfaces. Mm -hmm. um, one has access to the internet, and then the secondary one just has a private connection that, 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 that is reachable through the Open Gear appliance. So in this case, it's just a local LAN. Just a local LAN, yeah. Essentially, as long as the uh, Open Gear appliance can reach the Nook, um, we're able to action against it. And as, I'm, um, as we look at here, so I'll go ahead and disconnect from this. Um, if you were to go back to our previous demo now and look at Thousand Eyes, you can see that the Nook is now alive. Um, but we'll go ahead and disconnect from this. And the, uh, the, the, and then we'll go ahead and just drop this VPN connection too. But essentially, the only requirement here is just some kind of a VPN client, open VPN client, to drop your personal workstation that you're trying to troubleshoot from to the operations manager. And then there were some advanced functionalities, if you look here, as I mentioned, for security purposes, you can create policies to ensure that not every user can connect to everything. And then if you want to push the, uh, the WAN route, so let's say that you have a very big edge and you want to be able to access everything behind it, not just your LAN connection, but your WAN connection too, then you just simply check this box and it pushes the WAN network of the Open Gear appliance as well. I just want to clarify where you're sitting in an edge. That Do you see this being deployed, That this product um, set being deployed out to data center type locations or, or out to more uh, industrial kind of locations uh, or down to gas stations? Yeah, yeah. Good, great question. So um, the, the Open Gear appliances are, are deployed, at, deployed everywhere. So, um, and and I, I mean it when I say that. So we have uh, deployments in, in hyperscalers. Uh, they may not be using the IP access functionality because there's no need. They have so many different ways to get into their data centers. Um, we also have uh, many retail customers that are utilizing the IP access functionality, the serial console ability to be able to get to their devices um, in a retail location because generally uh, a retail location doesn't have um, smart hands. So when you're talking about a retail location, we're talking about you know, a, a large department store or the, the local store in a mall selling hair accessories. Yeah, um, both of these? Yeah, both of those, absolutely. Yeah, we have, we have large department stores where they actually you know, uh, purchase bigger port density devices because their closets happen to be bigger. And we have smaller locations uh, where there is only one or two equipment there but they still need the resiliency. Um, one of the features that we didn't cover here that I think also pertains to the edge is, is, is called um, IP pass-through. And what that does essentially is uh, it enables the cellular modem on the open gear 
and then passes it to your downstream router. So it becomes your alternate broadband connection. And that is super handy on edge locations, on retail locations, um, where you can actually have an alternate way to get back. So I only had so many examples I could include, so that's another one that I think is a great fit. Yeah, and, and I think that's because of vendors we saw yesterday, the, the idea that there'll be cellular backup to the primary network was, was central to them, but if you've got a provider that doesn't have that, this will be the, the easy add-on. Exactly. Um, my, my next question, heading along the same sort of line, is in terms of the container hosting mm -hmm. platform, um, what you showed was primarily around deployment of some other downstream resource. Is there any intention that we might run our actual production line of business applications on that container platform? Um, it just depends on what you're trying to run on there. Um, so we have, um, on the Open Gear itself, uh, we, we actually deploy a lot of our features via Docker containers. IP access was a great example of that. Um, we always are more than happy to help assess what the uh, power requirement is, what the processing power requirement is. But yeah, absolutely, I can see a lot of, um, a lot of Docker containers. I could run my, my point of sale centralization on there and yeah, uh, absolutely. maybe some, uh, some part of my surveillance cameras. As long as it doesn't take too much memory and RAM, I think, I think we'll be good. <laughs> I, I think surveillance cameras will take too much uh, storage. <laughs> yeah, it won't, it, won't um, it, it does a great job giving you that, that extra resiliency. Um, and on, on top of that, uh, what we hear a lot with these solutions, um, such as the cellular IP pass-through solution, is they, they cover one aspect of it, right? So you're waiting for something to fail, and then you can utilize the cellular out-of-band functionality. But uh, what we've done in our appliance is to kind of provide you that end-to-end -end resilience from the first day that you deploy at the edge to everyday monitoring to the last day of, of when something goes bad, we have you covered. So instead of you having to purchase a top of rack switch for connectivity and have to purchase a device that provides you cellular in case something else goes bad and have to purchase a device that gives you console connectivity to your devices and another device that gives you network connectivity, we kind of combined all of that into a single solution that you can constantly um, operate and manage. How much horsepower, like we, we were looking at these OM 1200s, um, you know, coming back, I guess, to how much workload you could probably practically run on them, because um, it was 16 gig of memory or something, wasn't yep, it? So, yep. and a single core. Uh, they're they're um, four core processors. I'll, I'll double check that. Um, they're four core, and then they are um, eight gigs of RAM, four gigs of RAM, and then the bigger boxes will have um, higher eight, eight gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of um, processor. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, 64 gigs of um, uh, storage. Yep. And that is mainly used for um, uh, file storage purposes as well, because a lot of customers um, will essentially. Sorry about that. I don't know why Teams is responding when everything. Yeah, it's four closed. cores. What was that? It's four cores. It's four cores. Yeah, hundred is four yeah. cores. Um, but it, it, essentially, uh, we use this for hosting a lot of operating systems for our customers. So whether it's a um, an a office building that's going to have 20, 30 racks going into it, or uh, MSPs and resellers actually use our product as the ZTP platform for everything that they have. They're essentially hosting all the config files, they're plugging in all their switches and gear, using us as the delivery system of the configuration. Um, and as soon as something goes wrong, they have a console connection to jump in and figure out what went wrong. And the storage on it, uh, while we're on storage, is it resilient or is it single point of failure within the device? Um, it's a it's a single it's 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 a single piece of hardware. Uh, it's just an M2 storage. Okay, but sing, single M2, single not married. Correct. Uh, one of the questions that did come up in the Slack, I will just give you a chance to answer it as well, is the pricing question. Mm -hmm. um, roughly, how much are these things? Uh, one, uh, I think the operations manager, the bigger boxes, are roughly about five six. Um, MSRP, and then the the smaller boxes I think are uh, around two. Okay. 